Hi, this is Steve, and as you can see, I'm back in business, and a couple of people helped me out with the computer, and I want to say thank you, even though they asked to be anonymous, but uh, I appreciate it, so let's get into the video. We're going to do a two part series about doing a water heater for low diversion. And I think electric water heating makes an excellent diversion because uh, you don't have to have as big a battery bank. It gives you a place to put the power in the form of hot water. And it's worked successfully for me for about almost three years now, right at this location. And what I did was I purchased a, a regular 50 gallon electric water heater. Nothing fancy about it at all and what I did was I took the heating elements out of it and this is uh, one of the heating elements that was in it when I bought it uh, and it's a 4500 watt 240 volt heating element and as you know that's pretty much uh, uh, the max of most inverters out there. My inverter is rated at 4400 watts this is 4500 watts and uh, you can see here uh, give the camera a minute here to focus in on it you can see it's 4500 watts at 240 volts and what I did was I took these out of the water heater and I replaced them with a 3000 watt and you can see I used this for a while it got uh, a lot of uh, calcium build up on it and this burned out because of calcium deposit not because it was a different rating or anything like that it still kind of ended up being too much and uh, so I went to a smaller one that uh, this one's a 2500 watt and sits a little bit smaller and uh, the uh, 2500 watts is written right on the bottom there we'll let the camera focus on that and um, this one also corroded up and I had a problem going through these about every three months and I bought a uh, water conditioner that was electronic and it seems to have helped um, I haven't replaced any in over a year now and I also ended up going to these uh, elements here these are rated at 2000 watts and uh, I've not replaced these yet. And uh, give you a close up on that also. It's uh, 2000 watts, 240 volts. So this uh, pulls a little bit less than half of my inverter's capacity. And what I like about it is um, the inverter can drive it, yet we still have enough power left over for running the toaster, washing machine. If the well pump kicks on, it's not too big of an issue. Um, so it works real well. And you don't have to be worried about the uh, size of the, uh, the water heater element. That doesn't really have to do with anything other than how fast it'll make the hot water. So even though I've gone from a 4500 watt water heater element to a 2000 watt water heater element, it takes a lot longer, a little more than twice as long to heat the water up, nearly three times as long. But, you know, it lets us do dishes and laundry midday and then in the evening we get to have a nice bath. And uh, right now we got a house full of three people, my wife and my stepdaughter and I, and it handles all of us fine. So, uh, in this series we're going to talk pretty much just about how to set up a water heater, bring down its electrical requirements so that going off grid you'll be able to uh, make your own hot water and not worry about having to have such a huge system 
uh, to be able to drive it because it'll heat steadily through the day. Uh, it just it's just simply a load dump. I've got a uh, the charge controller is programmed to turn the water heater on through solid state relays and um, it's well I need to go get the relays to talk about that hang on okay uh, whenever I first set the system up I used a automotive headlight relay to turn the water heater on and off uh, mostly the reason I did that was because I could readily find it at Radio Shack which was nice but uh, it was just a standard uh, automotive headlight relay and then I uh, noticed it was kind of smelling one day and you can see that side there that's kind of uh, melted a little bit the contacts weren't making as good a contact and it's started messing up so I went to my uh, my scrap box and I got an old solid state relay and I had a piece of aluminum uh, roof vent that I used for a heat sink on it and uh, you can kinda get an idea of what that looks like it's uh, it works like a relay but it's it's solid state and instead of having a mechanical contact that opens and closes it actually has a LED inside of it that triggers a triac and for those of you that aren't real electronic savvy uh, it, it's basically a light sensitive trigger um, like uh, kind of like your on off switch works uh, for a light that turns on when it gets dark it's the same kind of principle uh, it has a little LED that shines on this little thing in there it's a triac it's not really a photo resistor but it's the same principle and uh, that turns the water heater on and off that's what I used in my prototype and uh, the system that I've got now is quite a bit different and we'll, we'll take a look at that um, and that works out real well I haven't had any issues with that since then main thing on something like that is to heat sink it properly because you're gonna have some heat dissipation off of it because um, the water heater is still gonna be pulling uh, 10 15 amps at 240 volts so still quite a bit uh, I got the relays off of uh, eBay that I'm using for it. The one that I got out of my junk box is one I had from some projects several years ago. Um, so anyway, uh, let's have a look at uh, the water heater and see how we do that. Okay, on a water heater you can see the element right in there. And you have to get a wrench in there to take it out. The lower is the same way. You can see that it's right there and you use a wrench and you unscrew it after you've taken the wires off of course and then uh, you just put the new one in and replace the wires onto it I've uh, got this uh, wire nut here because I did a little bit of rewiring on this Okay, we're going to go through a real quick tutorial on how I programmed my charge controller. It's a Xantrex XW MPPT 5, excuse me, 6150. It means maximum output is 60 amps and 150 volts is the maximum input. And I uh, programmed this so that, uh, go down here to the uh, aux menu. And um, I've got it set to automatic. This is what determines what turns the water heater on and off through that solid state relay. So I've got it where it triggers on a high battery voltage. And it triggers at 55.2 volts. And then it clears at 51.8 volts. So once the battery is charged up to 55 volts, the water heater turns on. And then once the voltage drops down to 51.8, it shuts off. During the middle of the day, this uh, will stay on because it'll never reach 51.8. So once it starts to get dark or when the sun's coming up, uh, the water heater cycles on and off quite a bit. Then I have what's called a trigger delay and clear delay. Now the trigger delay 
uh, I've got it set for 30 seconds. In other words, when the high battery voltage is reached of 55 point whatever it was, it waits 30 seconds and then it turns the water heater off or on. The clear delay means that when it drops down to 51.8, it'll continue to go for another 15 seconds and then it'll turn the water heater off. And the output level is 12 volts. You can uh, you can have it put out anywhere down to I think 3 volts. I'm not 5 volts is the lowest it'll go, and I think 12 is the highest it'll go. So I've got it set set for a 12 volt trigger. Oh, it'll go higher than that. 13. I've got it set to 12. The the uh, relays, solid state relays, will take up to 32 volts DC. And it, like I said, it's just an LED, and it's got a little voltage regulator inside there that. Uh, the higher voltages don't matter. So now output mode active high. In other words, I could have it work in the reverse. If I went in there and told it to go low, active low instead, then what's going to happen is right now with the sun going down, I'd be making hot water and that would kill my batteries. But on this one, it's active high. In other words, it's going to turn the LED on and the solid state relay to turn the water heater on, if that kind of makes sense to you. And then it, we're back around to the beginning where the aux control and we've got it set to automatic. You can set it to manually off or manually on. And sometimes I'll do uh, manually on or off if I'm doing some work on it or testing or whatever. So anyway, that's, uh, that's my system. The sun's almost down. I'm still making 170 watts of electricity. So that's kind of nice.